In our article, we investigate misinformation uh, on human trafficking and how it has changed uh, perceptions about this uh, issue. Uh, social media has been flooded with posts from citizens who have seemingly inside knowledge about human trafficking. Uh, we were interested to see how they got this information, how they became sort of specialists uh, on all matters human trafficking. We found that these kind of beliefs are very much tied to a French conspiracy named QAnon, which kind of got its start in uh, 2016 through a, again, a conspiracy that was called Pizzagate, in which uh, it was insinuated that there is a child trafficking ring so it fed into this, into QAnon's main conspiracy that there is an elite group of pedophiles ruling the world uh, for decades. Um, in this Pizzagate case, however, um, one person actually took matters into their own hands, Edgar Madison Welch, uh, and actually drove to Washington, D.C. and uh, armed uh, and investigated for himself uh, in the restaurant whether there are children in the basement or not, which obviously there weren't. Um, and uh, this is for us to show that, that QAnon ha is, is not just uh, uh, simply a group of crazies, but there is uh, a lot we need to be careful about uh, in the ways these conspiracy theories have power with the people. And QAnon seems really new. It seems novel. It seems unique because we're just seeing these posts explode over the last two years, probably exacerbated by the pandemic. Um, it feels like a fad. Um, it's not a fad. There is a historic and ongoing basis of QAnon. For instance, uh, dating back to the Middle Ages, there was um, a, a horrible anti-Semitic conspiracy called blood libel that says that um, uh, elite Jewish people are sacrificing children in rituals. Um, QAnon echoes a lot of that. Uh, human sacrifice is a big part of what they claim that these elites are doing with these abducted children. Um, they're being taken off playgrounds in massive numbers, um, according to the conspiracy. Um, but even beyond that, uh, this is something that has been uh, plaguing human trafficking discourse for many, many years. Um, going back to the turn of the century um, and uh, the early 1900s, um, there were media sensations about how the other um, is a sexual threat, a deviant threat. And we see this in films like Birth of a Nation, um, where uh, when uh, recently liberated slaves, uh, the first order of business was to create um, a structure where they could um, assault uh, virginal and decent white women. Um, the QAnon uh, conspiracy really, really takes this, this idea and kind of continues it, that there is a group of people who are different than us, who don't share our values, who are taking our children. Um, and it, it has been informed uh, uh, throughout time, um, and we even see it currently um, in DIY activism that predates QAnon, where people would uh, raid massage parlors in an attempt to liberate the women who are being oppressed there. Um, the idea, again, being that someone has come to our shores and is doing something against our values and that we have to save them. Uh, so there is a history to this. There is a history to the QAnon conspiracy. Uh, and we as anti-trafficking educators are compelled to interrogate that history um, and see how both QAnon and historical misinformation about human trafficking has hurt our ability to get out important messages, um, messages that very frequently uh, relate to ensuring that um, uh, groups uh, related to issues of gender, agency, and class, that those things are respected and that they are not co-opted by people who seek to do harm uh, to the very important anti-trafficking movement that seeks to help people um, rather than view them as actors and pawns in a greater conspiracy.